and welcome to episode 81 of series 4 of Master League Story Mode. So three exciting points of admin to get through before we get into the first game of this episode, which you will notice there is Malmo. Yes, we have had to skip forward a few games. I mentioned that we probably need to do this because we're running out of time and then I did the maths roughly, back of a fag packet stuff, and we don't have enough time. So we went and played a couple of games. To start things off, we had a fairly pedestrian win against Stoke City. Yep, 2-0 at the Orcs. Thank you very much. No problems. Uh, Dubois scored a header, as did Goodwin Koyalapu. And then the headers continued into the uh, second game that I played in between the two episodes. And Wolves were a much more difficult opposition, there's no doubt about that. But it was a Hulk goal at the end to seal it with not long left. I think only a handful of minutes remaining. He snuck in at the far post after, uh, after a good move, actually, from Arsenal who uh, came back from obviously the very disappointing 2-0 loss to Southampton in the last episode. And that now sees us into two incredibly crunch games. First of all, it's Malmo in our Champions League group stage. Obviously, it's not in our hands. A win for AC Milan against Benfica would see us out, regardless of the result in that game. And then we go up against Manchester City at the Emirates, and we can close the gap. Yes, we can. We can make it 41 points all and that would be good because it was disappointing to drop off with the Southampton game, especially with this Manchester City game on the horizon. Not what we needed, so we need to bounce back strongly. So that's one thing to talk about. Second thing is, again, the link there is still there for score against cancer. I'm going to give a few more days, just this one episode basically, until I announce the winner. So if you want to donate any money at all, you can donate a pound and you can win a Pez water bottle, Pez football, a Pez story mode mug. You fucking mug mug. The Tim Sherwood piece of memorabilia that only one other person in the world owns. You could be the second. Only one pound will win you that, potentially. And also, a signed picture of Jack Harrison. Yes, the Jack Harrison. Whew. I mean, surely that's worth a pound. Worth a punt. I think it'd be one of about five or six going for it right now. So, still definitely worth a go. And an incredible cause. Did you catch the live stream on Friday? It was a cracker. It was a belter. Really enjoyed it. Great effort from all the lads. Gutted I couldn't be there. But anyway, great cause. Donate to that. Third thing is, and this is the most exciting of the three pieces of news, the vote will now be up to the patrons to decide who will be the next manager of Master League Story Mode, the first manager of PES 2019, and there are going to be two options. Two options. So, as ever, if you want to be involved in this vote, then all you have to do, and I keep saying, I'm not just trying to squeeze money out of you, that's not normally my thing, obviously the cancer thing, you should probably support that if you have the money and you, and you fancy it, and you know, Patreon for this channel, well if you enjoy watching these videos, and you want to support me, support the channel, but also get to become a producer or a co-author on the channel and vote on the decisions that shape the stories of Master League Story Mode, then you can, one dollar a month. Toko Botsa, one of the uh, long-term commenters of this channel, just came on board at the producer level for four dollars in the last week. And uh, I'm very, very happy to have you there, mate. And you're going to get a say in this massive, massive decision. So manager number one. Well, he started his time at Leeds United very well in real life. Yes, it will be Marcelo Bielsa, the Argentinian known as El Loco, the crazy one. And he has taken over at Leeds. And believe this or not, or believe it or not, or believe me or not, you should believe me. Why would I lie? I was so close. I was so close when I ended up doing the Ian Holloway at QPR to doing a Marcelo Bielsa at Leeds way before there was any even any talk of him going there. Uh, he's an incredible manager. He's been the influence and the inspiration behind Pep Guardiola, Pochettino, a, a huge number of different managers. He's got a really interesting approach to football. The tactical side of this series, if we go to Bielsa, will be really, really enthralling. This, it's going to be fun. I've, I've set it up. It works. It does work. And he really is a do-or-die manager. He's also a bit of a character. That is an understatement. You don't get the nickname El Loco for nothing. And uh, he's going into a lead side. You've got a very good chance of getting promoted by the looks of it. And uh, there's one little extra cherry on top of the cake. Yes, as you know, Manchester City player he is now has been loaned. It's Jack Harrison. Yep, he is at Leeds as well. So it'll be Marcelo Bielsa at Leeds with Jack Harrison. That's a little bonus. And I think the aim of that series would be, I mean, he's had some success in his time. Of course he has. But as such an influential coach, who so many cite as being one of the best I mean, he won the Olympics with Argentina. That was pretty good. But other than that, at club football, he's really maybe not done as well as he would like. I, I think that would be fair to say, considering that his sort of uh, his mindset and his approach to football has influenced so many successful managers. So whether we took him all the way with Leeds or whether it was a journeyman thing and he got to move to another big club and see how well his, uh, his approach to football worked there, I don't know. So it probably would be a journeyman type series as we have done with Kareem Diakra. 
Um, but it would be his sort of final chance, his his final hurrah to prove to everyone that his way of playing football is the right way. So obviously that would be an exciting one. So that's that's choice number one. Does that interest you? Maybe. But choice number two is also a pretty good one. It will be, and I'm sorry to what I know there are a lot of Celtic supporters on this channel, but it would be Steven Gerrard at Rangers. But it will throw in a little extra spice and he will be a player manager. Yet yeah, we're going to resurrect Steven Gerrard as a player. It's not what's happening in real life, obviously, although I'm sure a lot of Rangers fans would like it to be. Uh, so, yeah, we'll give that a go. And I think the plan behind that series would be, obviously, to uh, break the dominance of Celtic. When it comes to the old firm, it's been a long time since Rangers have even been able to compete. So hopefully Gerrard could achieve that. And then he's got to go and make up for that slip, hasn't he? He's got to go and win the league with Liverpool. And I think that would be the career path. You know, maybe we could deviate from that. I don't know. We'll just have to see how things go. But those are the two choices. It'll be one of those two men, Marcelo Bielsa or Steven Gerrard, as the manager for Pez 19's Master League Story Mode. Very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. I'm sure you'll agree. So let me know what you think in the comments. And obviously, if you want to have an actual, real, physical say in which of those two managers we choose for next year, then go and become a patron. One dollar a month is all it takes. You can pull out as soon as you've done the vote. It's up to you. But I would really, really, I really massively value your support. I don't know if I mentioned the patrons enough and how much they mean to me and how much and how much going out of their way to donate to help this channel is uh, just a huge, huge part of what keeps me going through the dark times. And also, it has helped me invest in equipment and it will help me invest in equipment in the future. And uh, there are goals on there as well. We've dropped off a little bit from the $100 a month goal. When we get to that, we are going to be adding live streams into the uh, into the Pez Story mode schedule every fortnight. So if we can get there, you know, there's another good reason, maybe. But anyway, there we are. Three bits of admin, each more exciting than the last. But the excitement does not stop here. Oh, no. Oh, no, it doesn't. We've got to uh, go and we've got to beat Malmo today to give ourselves a chance of getting out of this Champions League group. The chances are looking slim. A draw or a win for AC Milan would see them go through quite comfortably. And uh, we struggled against Malmo, didn't we? We lost. Did we lose or draw? We didn't do well. They've got a lot of 60-rated players, but they've got Diaz up front, who's an absolute beast. And, uh, yeah, we've got some tired legs here. Ah, oh, Fabinho. For... Well, we're going to have to play him, and we're just going to have to hope. We're just going to have to hope that we can get ahead in time, that we can take him off and it not be a problem. Uh, Coyalepo on a downward arrow will bring in... Um, Martinez there, and we can't afford to risk it today. Dembele has been poor, and I think he his uh, time at Arsenal has run its course. Have to wait and see whether any bids come in for him, or we can uh, maybe trade him for someone. Actually, let's just see. Have we got... Let's just check. I've forgotten. Have I got negotiations? Have I got some cooking? Have I got some in the pot? I have got some going, so yeah. We're still in for Sadibe, 17 million. It's a good shout at right back, not really an improvement. Butlin, we really want. Dybala, yep, yeah, putting another bit for him tonight. And Lamar and Mbappe. We're going big. We want some of these big stars. And, uh, you know, we, we, we're willing to uh, offer a very lightly used Usman Dembele, if any of those do, uh, do occur. Anyway, so as we were saying, let's get back into this. Big Rog, swap him in. Big Hulk, swap him in too. Everyone else, I think we're going to have to give Koscielny a run out in place of Laporte, who looks tired, there's a lot of tired legs. And David Ospina, not ideal, but he can play today. Oh, right, come on then. Let's, uh, let's make this at least doable. We need a win today. So here we are, the Emirates crowd will know that actually the result here today is sort of immaterial. I mean, it's not. We need to win, of course, and we would expect to win against Malmo. We said that when we went to Sweden, but here at the Emirates, uh, in the form that we're in, you would hope, you'd hope for a win. As I said, all the, uh, all the Arsenal fans will have their ears glued to their, to their radios. Do people still do that? I guess you don't need to anymore, do you? That, would, that was such a nice little touch, wasn't it, in years gone by, before smartphones, where you'd see people in the crowd and they'd have one earphone in. You could tell they had their little wireless radio with them. And they're listening for results on the final day of the season. Well, it's going to be a little like that today, but hopefully they come up in our favour. Let's get into it. Early free kick here for Malmo. It's a dangerous one. Oh, Diaz is unmarked. Oh, my God. What the f How? How has he got away from him there? Maybe they're trying to play offside. That's not a good sign, though. Here we come. We've got men forward now. Sanchez just about finds Big Rog. Steps inside. Roger Martinez now to the line. Cuts it back. Dubois there. What are you doing there? Oh, it's fallen, though. Martinez. Hulk. Slices it wide for fuck's sake. It was on his weaker foot. But still, should have been a goal there. Should have been 1-0. Should 
Good running from Big Raj. Dubois made his way into the box. Couldn't finish. Diaz stays away from Marquinhos. For fuck's sake, this guy is pissing me off. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The curling effort is wide. Diaz is a fucking monster. Got to sign him. <laughs> Diaz again. The untackleable. Oh, Koscielny does manage it. And now what can we do with Martinez? A little bit isolated here. Looking for backup. S slide it wide into Alexis Sanchez. He'll step in. Back to Big Raj. Strength here. Back inside. Pokes it with the right. Oof. Did really well. Keep a good save as well. Hulk. Great work. Gets the ball away. Martinez now. Can he find a way out? Has to go out to Hulk. Theo Hernandez now. Time to put a ball in. It's a good one. Tielemans is there with the header. Yes. Yes. Great work from the Belgian. Good run from deep. Arriving late in the box after the move broke down. But we kept the ball. That's what counts. Malmo have been good defensively so far. Hulk kept it moving. Theo had a good amount of time to look up. And, uh, oof. Well, I don't... Did that come off the Malmo player? Let's not. Let's not overanalyze this. Tielemans did very well to get into the box. Oh, no. No, that's a fairly clean connection. We'll take it. It's 1-0. Oh, mistake there from Safo. He's misread that. Hulk into Martinez. Big Rog. Yes. Yes. So there we go. Simple stuff. Hulk won it back. That's a great ball from Hulk. He's consistently performing for Arsenal. And Dembele watching from the bench quite rightly. Big Rog slots it home. That's a lesson there. And there we are, half time, and it's 2 0 here at the Emirates. That's much more like it. This is the sort of result we should be having against Malmo, who haven't been completely toothless. They have created chances. Diaz again looks like an absolute handful. Not going to uh, not going to miss playing him as we leave this group. But yeah, 2 0 up now. Let's finish this one off and uh, hope and pray that AC Milan aren't doing the same thing to Benfica. Let's go. Fabinho into Malcolm. Back to Fabinho. This is better here from Arsenal. Hulk will hit this one. <laughs> Had to hit it first go. Bit wide, but still. Great form at the moment. Sanchez out to Dubois. Now Martinez. He's got Sanchez making a great run on his outside. And he can find him here into the box. Alexis Sanchez to seal it here. Oh, that's poor. That's poor. Should have just drilled that bottom corner. So we go triple sub and no Dembele coming on. That's telling. That is telling as the transfer window approaches. And there it is. Oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. Head in hand there for Olivier and Cham. Yeah, we're out. We're out. It looks like Benfica couldn't do us what we needed. And that's unfortunate. Well, it's going to be Europa League for us. But the big question is, does Corinne Diacra keep her job? Well, we won't know. Probably until, I would say, the January transfer window. But there we are. Confirmation. It was a draw between Benfica and AC Milan. That is very, very sad. So the worst has happened. What we feared might happen. We got off to such a slow start. That was the problem. Here we are now into the Europa League round of 32. Who will we get? I guess a Europa League. Oh, we could have had Clermont. They're going up against Inter. That is a tough draw. Very tough draw for them. And we have got RB Leipzig. That's a pretty tough one. That is a pretty tough draw for us. Oh, and Lamar and Butland have gone through. That is exactly the bit of good news we needed today. And we're out of the Champions League. This is not good. That is the one thing we were asked for by the board. And uh, just a shame right now. But is that a shame that's going to end in Karin Diakra losing her job? I don't know. Hopefully the fact that we're still well in the uh, well in the fight for the league. 28% owner trust. We can't afford many more losses, I would say, even at this point. I don't know what the threshold is, but it would be a horrible way to end the Karin Diakra series for her to get finally the big move to Arsenal and then lose her job so quickly. That would be a real disappointment. We've got to get it out of our heads now and get into this Manchester City game. And, yeah, get back level with them on points. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at the transfers now. I just forgot to do that. But in the meantime, just before this game, we've had a, a bid from PSG for Alexis Sanchez. And we've been offered the Atletico Madrid job. I mean, that is a very t tempting appointment. If it wasn't for the fact that we're at Arsenal now and battling for this league title, could say maybe get out of dodge. Anyway, let's take a look. Butland for 29 million. That would be very, very nice, wouldn't it? It's definitely a better player than uh, Alves, and he's got room to improve, and an Englishman in the squad finally, which a lot of people have pointed out. We don't have a single English player in our side, which is disappointing, so that would be a good good appointment. Any trades we could do? Not really. I mean, we can sell Koscielny, which will bring in 33 million. That would pay for him. 
Not much point in arguing over a million. And then Thomas Lamar. Only 27 million for Lamar. That is a steal, surely. Surely. Is he going to be much better than Dembele? I don't know. But Dembele is just not working for us right now. Uh, he's a great crosser of the ball. I guess we'll play him as a, a proper left winger. Have him bombing up and down that left-hand side. He's got early cross. He's got long ball expert. I mean, those things... Those, those are good. Low lofted pass, one touch pass. He's definitely more of a passer than Dembele. So uh, yeah, we'll try and bring him in. Do we want a swap deal? Can we do a swap deal? Obviously we could swap Dembele. Dembele and nothing. I mean, Dembele is worth a lot more money. <sighs> Let me know in the comments what you think we should do with Butland and Lamar. We've got plenty of time. We've got Sadibe, Butland and Lamar lined up. I think the sale of Koscielny could definitely pay for a lot of that. That would take us to, how much did they, 33, nearly 34 million, so that would be 46 million. Very, very tempting to sell him, and I think that would cover most of those signings. And obviously Alexis Sanchez, well, they're offering us 49 million for him. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Maybe we could train him for Neymar. Any chance of that? No chance of that. Could trade him for Raheem Sterling, a player that we looked at. I don't know if I want to sell Sanchez, though. That's the problem. That's the problem. Cavani, maybe. <sighs> Draxler. Tempting. I think we keep Sanchez. Probably. Probably. Unless we really need the money. Oh, and we can sell Alves to fund Butland. No problem there at all. So we can definitely get that done. Malcolm will probably stay. And uh, there may be some other sales we can make. But that's exciting. That is a great start. We're going to keep going back in, though, for Mbappe. Until he just gets bored of hearing from us. Definitely would like to sign him. And uh, Amini Harrit as well. He's an exciting attacking midfielder. I'm not 100% sure with Malcolm or Alexis Sanchez in that position. So if we do, we could. Let's get into this game now though. The important business. The top of the table clash. Who will start up front for us today? Oh, Sanchez on a downward arrow. <sighs> has all the transfer talk. Just turned his head a bit. Well, Hulk has to play, I think. He's been excellent. Big Roger's a little bit tired. We're going to... Oh, God, do we play Dembele? <laughs> Don't even know anymore. Don't even know. What we could do is play Malcolm out there and give Tielemans a start at attacking midfield, which he's okay at, and bring in Olivier and Cham. Never fails us. Yeah, I think that could work. We'll try that. Ospina has to play. That's a shame. Marquinhos is looking tired, but we've got to start him, really. Dembele will be disappointed not to start today, but oh, he's just done nothing to prove that he deserves it. So maybe a substitute appearance for him would be about right at the moment. Manchester City, you've got Lacazette and Jesus up front. They've got Insigne on this. is an insane team. Phil Foden in there. 69 rated still. Expected to be a lot higher rated in PES 19. Especially with some of his pre-season performances for Man City. And you can see why this team is doing so well. N'Golo Kante in there as well. Fernandinho and N'Golo Kante to deal with. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot for Encham and Fabinho to... Uh, to live up to, but they've they've been pretty good. They've been pretty good. Let's get into it. Come on, big game. So this is where we have to stand up and be counted at the Emirates. This is a game that could see Manchester City move six points clear of us as Christmas approaches. Or it could be the game that brings us back level, swings the momentum in our favour, and gets this, uh, gets this team that have had a few stutters, but essentially have had an incredible start under Karim Diakra, just puts them into the next gear, just steps them up to steamroll our other teams. And uh, yeah, make it very difficult for Manchester City to stay with us. Golden Boots is back in. Can he find the net? Let's go. Come on. Fabinho's found a little bit of space here. He can find Goodwin Koyalapu. Looks for the Hulk. Inside of Kalasinac to start us off perfectly here. Oh, he's at the post. You're fucking kidding me. Oh, the back heel. <laughs> oh, yes. Get in there. Hulk in the third minute. Well, he looked to have done everything right in the first place. Beat his man with ease, step back inside, and then powered it against the post. Dembele again watching on from the bench. Karim Diakra, though, will feel vindicated starting Hulk for the second time. He scored today, and that is some quick thinking with the back heel. No one really responded to the rebound off the post, except for him. It's good work from Koyalapu, simple ball in, and then he's inside of Kalasinac, no problems at all. Should have finished that, though. Bravo. Couldn't get to it, and he was left sprawling. None of the Manchester City players able to spot the ball. As it rebounded off the post. It was very simple stuff here from Arsenal to start the game. But Hulk in today. Looked like he'd missed a sitter. Well, he, he did. And then no one. Company just too slow. And that is a cheeky back heel. Really the only option there. And we're ahead. 
Zeus now gets the shot off. Wow, Ospina forced into a save. There was some pretty poor defending there. Hernandez giving that away needlessly. Can't be making mistakes like that. We will be punished by this Manchester City side. And Jesus got a good shot off. Ospina, good save. Koyalapu into Hulk. Oh, he's fouled there. Surely edge of the box by Kalasinac, I think. He's having a difficult game. And this is certainly Malcolm territory. Scored a couple of good free kicks already for Arsenal. Can he find the back of the net here? Claudio Bravo in goal for City. Oh, that is sublime. That is sublime. <laughs> Malcolm hasn't necessarily been our best player this season. We maybe expected too much from him in that number 10 role. We gave him the number 10. We said, this is your position to take. And uh, in open play, maybe he's failed to reach the potential we wanted, but... From set pieces, he's been absolutely deadly. That's his third free kick of the season now. And that is lovely. Claudio Bravo, no chance. And Manchester City now, two goals behind. This is the perfect start here, 15 minutes in. Marquinhos streaming forward here. Seen the run of Koyalapu. That's a good ball. Koyalapu inside of Mangala. Surely to win it here. Wow, golden boots on song. Sparkling. In the North London sunshine. And the Emirates fans. Absolutely ecstatic here. <laughs> what? I can't believe I can't believe this. How is this happening? This is not in the script. Pep Guardiola's Manchester City side have been put to the sword here. Great hustle and bustle from Kyalapu as he steps inside of Mangala. And then Claudio Bravo. Beaten. For the third time today. It was all from the run of Marquinhos as well. Took possession. Took charge. Kyalapu. Looked to be second best there, but he's made Mangala look stupid. And, well, we know what he's like when it comes to one-on-one -on -one finishing. Very rarely messes up. There we have it. Come on. Manchester City now. It's only a matter of time before they play their way back into this one. Jesus, though, with a lot of, uh, lot of attention. Can't get it away. And then Hulk caught in possession by his Brazil teammate. Lacazette, ex-Arsenal. No, that's not in the script. <sighs> Jesus. That was stupid. And that's half-time here at the Emirates, and it was three goals within half an hour for Arsenal. The home side looking imperious. Manchester City tried to play their way back into it, but they were shell-shocked. Did manage to get some shots off eventually, but Arsenal looking comfortable here. How unlikely was this? Insigne, ball over the top. Jesus battles with Marquinhos. Oof. That's a good ball eventually out to Sane. The Hernandez, close attention. Puts a great cross in. Jesus Christ. That is not what you do. And somehow we didn't get that back. Now Jesus. Oh, great block by Marquinhos. But this is looking a bit desperate here. Jesus. Oh, it's been a great save. Fuck. Let's not give away an early goal. That's how things go horribly wrong. David Silva whips it in. Dangerous one. Laporte good header away. Golo Kante has it nicked off him by Dembele, the substitute. And now we'll look to break. Fresh legs of his man Dembele through the centre. Got the option of Goodwin Koyalapu out on the right. Oh, and he's fouled there by Mangala, surely. Short one is on. Looks for the ball into Dembele. Surely now to win it. Oh, he just isn't falling for him, is it? That is so unfortunate. Great quick thinking there from Goodwin Koyalapu. Claudio Bravo with an incredible save to prevent the substitute getting what surely would be the winner here. I mean, it's pretty much dead and gone anyway. It would have been nice for Dembele to get a goal. Surely too far for Aguero, and it is. Now then Bele. Oh, he's away from Fernandinho. Lovely drop of the shoulder. Seems to be looking good as a super sub. He can slip in Goodwin Koyalapu here. What would surely be the winner? Oh, inside. Oh, that is insanity. Absolute insanity. I mean, it's too late for the winner now. But Goodwin Koyalapu has gone slightly under the radar. The goal's not flowing quite as freely as they were in the first few games of his real breakthrough at Arsenal. This is great work from Dembele through the centre. Come on as an attacking midfielder. That's an interesting one. And then Koyalapu, well, made Vincent Company look very, very much his age there. The young gun. Oh, golden boots. Stayed on side well. Company tracking him all the way. Probably looking for the finish there. But roulette inside, then finish off the post. And that is us done here. And what a win. And there it is. What a win. I cannot believe it. Get in there. Yes. Green Diacre will be very, very proud of her boys today. And it's Goodwin Koyalapu with two goals against the league leaders in the key matchup of the Premier League so far. And that will see us go back level on points. 
But what will that do for Manchester City's confidence? Or more importantly, what will it do for Kareem Diakra's Arsenal's confidence? It was a very close game. Look at that. When we played less passes, we would expect that. In a way, we're set up very well to play against the Guardiola side. Hit him on the break, and that's what we do. That is what we do. Ospina did make a few good saves, there's no doubt about that. But essentially a very close game. The very the difference was the finishing. And Goodwin Koyalapu with two very well taken goals. And the Hulk again, showing what he can do in for Dembele. He's uh, proving himself to be uh, a very, very important player in this side, which we never really saw coming. And that 4-0, as we see, takes us ahead on goal difference. Top of the league! Top of the league! Almost identical stats as well. But obviously a 4-0 win. That has seen us go on top. We would have been level on goal difference at 0-0. And we are both nine points ahead now for United and Tottenham. We're running away with it. It's a two-horse race as it stands. And isn't it great to be one of those beautiful horses? Manes flowing in the wind as we go ahead in the Premier League. Surely that will repair a little bit of the damage for having crashed out of the Champions League. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. And there we go, Goodwin Koyalapu, four goals ahead now of Icardi. Top of the goal rankings, we're top of the league. It's all going very, very well domestically. So next episode, or before next episode, we've got a fairly easy looking run of games. Fulham, Everton, Bournemouth, Villa. And then we're into the transfer window. We've got a cup game, I guess we'll try and play that. It really depends on how much of a chance I get to play some games. We've got United, Chelsea, Spurs. All after the transfer window slams shut. And then RB Leipzig as well. I mean, we don't really want to play many of those games. I'll try and do some extended highlights of them in the next episode. We'll see how far I get. But uh, yeah, obviously a lot of opinions that I want to hear in the comments for this episode. First of all, do we just do the obvious and sell Koscielny and buy Lamar and Butland and Sidibe? Well, sell Koscielny and sell Alves. That'd be 12.5 million plus 33. So what's that? 45, 46, 56, 68.5 million that would be, which would be enough to sign Lamar and Butland. I uh, don't think we will be able to afford Sadibe. We might be able to trade someone for him. Definitely those three are good to go. And then I feel like we're still missing one real standout player, which I think could be Mbappe, hopefully. We can sign him. And then Lamar, Mbappe, Sanchez, Koyalapu. All of those up front. That's going to be dangerous, isn't it? Maybe we can keep hold of Dembele. Who knows? Who knows? I'd like to keep him. He's a great player. Why Why not have loads of good players? We probably do need another central midfielder as well. And we do need right and left back backup. So we, well, Sadibe would provide that at least, I think. So, yeah. Exciting times. So let me know what you think about the transfers. Let me know what you think about next year's Master League Story Mode potential managers and the vote. Become a patron if you want to. And uh, yeah, well, plenty to hear from you about. I'll see you in a bit.